Hi everyone! Today I want to talk about the five things that I do to make my house smell good. Now you guys know that I'm a big Marie Kondo fan and of course one of the things that she says before you even get started with the decluttering process is to imagine your ideal space. And although everyone is going to have their own opinion about what that space should look like, I think we all share one thing in common and that is that we'd like our space to smell good. Now I am going to be talking about essential oils today and there are some safety precautions and important things you need to keep in mind, especially if you have pets or children. So I'll be including all of those tips at the end of this video and make sure you check it out if you're considering using those. The first thing and my most favorite thing is my Muji essential oil diffuser and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably seen it in a video or two already. There are endless amounts of essential oil blends that you can put into your diffuser. I don't have the time to get into any specific recipes today, but I would recommend that you just do an inventory of whichever essential oils you have on hand already and see if any of them would make for a good combination and then do a little bit of experimenting. Of course there's all the different combinations that just smell good, but there's also ones that can be used specifically to help you stay focused, to help you deal with anxiety, to help you relax or fall asleep, to help with nausea, cold and flu, and other things. There's even blends that can be for specific seasons like a Christmas blend or a fall blend, so there's really no limit with your creativity. The next thing I like to do is make a room spray, and this is essentially an aromatic spray. I use a glass bottle with a 50-50 concentration of vodka and distilled water, and then I add 10 to 40 drops of essential oils. Now the great thing about this room spray, as well as the essential oil diffuser, is you can really set the mood with the different scents that you use. Now I like to keep my essential oils in a dark glass bottle, and the reason for that is essential oils break down very easily when they're exposed to light and it also prevents the essential oils from kind of wearing down the plastic and altering that in any way. Now with these room sprays, you do need to shake before each use, so in order to do that properly, you need to make sure that you leave a little bit of space at the top of your bottle. That way you can shake it properly and mix it up before you spray. So as I mentioned before, I use equal parts of vodka and distilled water, and that is because you need to have an overall percentage of 20% alcohol in the mixture to act as a preservative. The alcohol also helps a little bit with diffusing the scent into the air. If you don't want to use vodka, you can swap that out for witch hazel, which also works just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my vodka first, then I'm going to add my essential oils and I'm going to shake it very carefully. This ensures that all of the essential oils distribute very well throughout the alcohol, and then you can finish by adding your water. Essential oils don't mix with water, so that's why we leave the water until the last step. The next thing I like to do is make a shoe spray, and this one's really easy to make because it's just straight vodka. I do like to add a little tea tree just to make it a little bit more antibacterial, but it's not required. The smell in shoes comes from bacteria, and bacteria that is feeding off of our sweat and other things. So if you work out a lot, or you have a husband who does, this can really help cut the odors before they start. It's really important that when you come in and take your shoes off, that you spray them with the vodka immediately and let them dry. We just let ours dry in the shoe cabinet and haven't had any issues. Now this next thing I don't do as often as the first three, but I thought it's worth a mention, and that is simmering some fruits, herbs, or spices on the stove. This is usually something I do when I have some extra lemon or orange rind sitting around, and rather than throwing them away, I want to extract a little bit more of that scent from them. Of course, as with everything we've talked about today, there are so many different combinations you can try. For this example, I'm going to show you with some lemon and fresh rosemary. Simply slice the lemon, break off the rosemary leaves, and put them into the pot of boiling water, and you're done. You can let it simmer for as long as you want, and the steam will fill your house with the beautiful aroma. My last tip has to do with the trash can, and of course one way to avoid garbage smells is to be zero waste. This is something I find fascinating, but it's not realistic for me right now, so we do have a trash can and in order to cut odors there, we'll sprinkle baking soda in it periodically. 
So baking soda can help a lot. And another thing that can help is putting your food scraps in the freezer. And this is something Marie Kondo did mention in her book, Spark Joy, which I thought was a great tip. A lot of the odors that you find in your trash can will be from food waste and liquid in general, so that can help a lot. And one of the good things about putting your food scraps in the freezer is you can use it later for composting. Now for the tips. Tip one, quality is everything. Go for 100% pure organic essential oils with no additives. Tip two, be careful with dosing. I generally use four drops per 100 milliliters of water for diffusing, but do your own research. Of course, there are many different types of essential oils and the dosing is going to vary depending on which one that you're using. Tip three, don't store essential oils in plastic. They can degrade it over time. Instead, use dark glass. Tip four, keep your essential oils away from extreme temperatures and direct sunlight. And always keep the lids on to prevent oxidation. Tip five, remember essential oils and vodka are flammable, so keep them away from any flames or sources of heat. Tip six, Many essential oils are not considered safe during pregnancy, nursing, for the elderly, for those with certain health conditions, or around children and pets. Do your research. And of course, you cannot trust everything you read on the internet, so really try to stick to scientific and evidence-based websites. If you're looking for a training or certification course, uh, there is one that I have some experience with and I will link it down in the description box. Now I should mention a couple products that I don't use and that would be anything with fragrance or perfume on the label. That's because the term fragrance is not regulated and that one little word can actually mean that there's up to 50 different chemicals inside of your product to make that fragrance and you have no idea what they are. However, as far as I'm concerned, it's not full disclosure and I'm much more happy to spend my money on products where I know exactly what is inside of them. If you have any tips on how to keep your house smelling great, leave them down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about the differences between the KonMari method and minimalism. Now they're not the same thing, and this is something I began to realize about six months ago, and I've been processing it, and I want to share my thoughts with you today.